Di Borneo, Malaysia, masa depan negeri Sarawak sedang terancam. Di bawah plan pembangunan koridor tenaga boleh diperbaharui Sarawak atau SKO, kerajaan bercadang membina beberapa empangan mega supaya dapat menjana perkembangan industrialisasi. Namun begitu, pembinaan empangan-empangan ini akan memberi banyak kesan negatif. Kawasan sebesar tiga Singapura akan dibanjiri dan fenomena ini secara langsung akan menyebabkan pemindahan ribuan penduduk asal kepupusan flora dan fauna dan melepaskan gas-gas rumah hijau yang akan mempercepatkan proses perubahan iklim dunia. Borneo mempunyai dua keperluan tenaga yang berkaitan tetapi amat berbeza. Salah satunya adalah untuk menghentikan kekurangan tenaga bagi masyarakat luar bandar, manakala satu lagi adalah untuk tenaga berskala utiliti bagi bandar-bandar dan perkembangan ekonomi. Terdapat satu langkah pembangunan yang mampu menghentikan kekurangan tenaga di Sarawak dan dapat mewujudkan pengagihan kekayaan yang adil, iaitu dengan menggunakan tenaga boleh diperbaharui. Di Universiti California Berkeley, Profesor Daniel Kamen dan Dr. Rebecca Shirley telah mengabdikan masa mereka untuk menyelidik dan mencari sistem tenaga yang paling efisien dan sesuai untuk Malaysia Timur. One of the big ironies of large-scale energy projects is that unless they're specifically for very large cities or industry, they're generally a very poor match to the energy needed by peri-urban urban areas and by rural communities, simply because a large project stepping down to a very small community, often far from the current transmission lines, is exceedingly expensive. So it's just simply more efficient development-wise to build up the resources you need and to do them cleanly than to hope and pray that your large project will reach communities because they almost never do. So the idea of moving to a distributed system isn't just about clean energy, it's actually often about more reliable and in many cases lower cost. If you're building a portfolio of projects in your country, how many of them run over their budget, uh, but also how big is the overrun? And we end up with unviable dams uh, very often, i.e. dams that will never pay back. About half the dams we looked at are a net drag on the economy. The countries would be better off had they not built the dam. SCORE, or the Sarawak Corridor of Renewable Energy, has identified more than 150 potential dam sites all across Sarawak. The current energy demand in Sarawak is a little over 1.2 gigawatts. SCORE would like to build out 20 gigawatts or 20,000 uh, megawatts of potential between now and 2030. Penjanaan lebihan tenaga dari SCORE merupakan tindakan ekonomi yang tidak rasional dan akan hanya menguntungkan syarikat-syarikat yang terlibat dalam pembinaan empangan dan sponsor-sponsor kerajaan berkenaan. Are we building dams to meet power demands? Are we building dams to meet the, the greed demands of certain politicians and their, and their companies? Plan Pembangunan Skor menjangka bahawa keperluan tenaga akan meningkat sebanyak 16% setiap tahun sehingga 2030. Namun demikian, Tiada negara yang pernah mempunyai peningkatan keperluan tenaga setinggi ini. Walaupun ketika negara China mengalami kemuncak pembangunan industri paling pesat, pertumbuhan kadar keperluan tenaga negara itu tidak melebihi 10% untuk tiga tahun. Membelanjakan berbilion-bilion dana awam atas jangkaan pertumbuhan kadar keperluan tenaga akan melebihi kadar puncak China sebanyak 160% langsung tidak bermunasabah. Tindakan tersebut bukan sahaja tidak rasional, tetapi juga tidak bertanggungjawab. The Sarawak Corridor for Renewable Energy. Calling the Mega Dam Project score is very clever, but it doesn't really reflect what the projects are about. Nama koridor tenaga boleh diperbaharui Sarawak amat mengelirukan. Projek-projek yang dilaksanakan bukan sekadar termasuk tenaga boleh diperbaharui, tetapi juga termasuk pelombongan arang batu. Industri-industri berasaskan minyak, peleburan aluminium, 
penebangan hutan untuk tanaman kelapa sawit dan empangan hidroelektrik yang besar. Empangan tersebut tidak lagi dikenali sebagai teknologi tenaga yang boleh diperbaharui. I would love to see SCORE transformed into a project that is really a resource to support true clean energy and not a replacement of, of it. Keputusan penyelidikan Carmen dan Shirley menunjukkan bahawa tenaga solar, biogesim dan hidroelektrik boleh digabungkan untuk menjana lebih banyak tenaga untuk grid. Tying together smaller amounts of solar, microhydro, small amounts of biomass that we might gasify or perhaps combust. Tying those systems together is now quite easy. Inovasi dalam bidang teknologi tenaga telah meningkatkan efisiensi dan kapasiti sistem-sistem tenaga boleh diperbaharui. Sebuah ladang solar berkapasiti 8 MW baru dibina di Melaka, Malaysia dan ladang tersebut dapat membekalkan tenaga untuk sebanyak 1,800 rumah setiap hari. And the great thing about solar is it, 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 it works on so many different levels. So you have these big you know, 200 MW solar farms that connect into the grid just like a, a big dam or a gas plant might. And then you have you know, much smaller systems. You can have systems that are on the roof of a large factory, medium scale systems, and then you have systems on, on people's rooftops. Prices have come down massively over the, next, over the last few years, something like 80% uh, reduction in the price of modules over the last four years. And then the prices of batteries is coming down now as well, and the uh, technologies are improving, so it's easier to store power with better batteries. Projek tenaga boleh diperbaharui yang berskala kecil merupakan pilihan rasional jika objektif pelaksanaan projek berkenaan adalah untuk menjana tenaga berskala kampung. Tony Bong telah melaksanakan projek tenaga berasaskan komuniti selama lebih dari satu dekad. The word decentralised is the key because uh, the most efficient uh, way of uh, power generation and distribution is energy has to be Uh, utilize in situ where it's been generated you know? uh, because you, you minimize the losses uh, of transmission and so on. In Borneo, Green Empowerment and Tony Bung focus on the development of, of community-based micro, micro hydro systems. Micro hydro systems are a very good model where it's not just addressing electrification but it also empowers the community in terms of managing the resources, uh, getting organized and also um, generate income. Sistem-sistem tenaga alternatif ini yang berskala kecil adalah berasaskan komuniti. Ia dapat memperkukuh ekonomi tempatan dan mampu membekalkan tenaga yang mencukupi untuk penduduk luar bandar. Tony Bung also develops gravity feed water systems uh, and solar photovoltaic systems, all you know, sort of mainly through this through this process of deep community engagement where really the community is the driver is the driving force behind the implementation of the project uh, i think mega dams is in short it's not for the people it's for the industry and so what is needed is uh, is a much more uh, holistic uh, renewable energy systems uh, policy uh, in the country and uh, we we need people policy makers, lawmakers, parliamentarians to take this on and uh, bring, bring it to the parliament and come up with a uh, very strong policy on that. Berbanding dengan skor, plan pembangunan yang berasaskan tenaga boleh diperbaharui tidak menaruhkan masa depan negara demi keuntungan jangka pendek. Masa depan yang dibina dengan tenaga boleh diperbaharui dan bukannya empangan mega akan membawa kemakmuran ekonomi kepada Sarawak di samping memelihara kediaman dan kehidupan ribuan penduduk. When you diversify your energy portfolio, you also diversify the jobs market. By gradually shifting to a green economy, you actually have higher returns on investment, higher GDP growth, more sustained GDP growth reduced rural poverty, increased job creation. Learn from the indigenous people. Go back to basics. Love our nature, respect the nature. Then I think we have a better future. You know, what is the goal here? What are we trying to do? Um, and I think that the proponents of SCORE 
are seeing the massive industrialization of the state of Sarawak as being the future that they want to see. Obviously, we see Sarawak as a place of rich natural and cultural resources. And I think that there are ways where you can develop a state or develop a country and still retain the you know, natural and cultural characteristics that make it a treasure right now. Pembangunan tanpa kemusnahan akan mengekalkan hutan yang penting kepada rakyat Sarawak dan kepada semua umat manusia. Thank you.